You've got that shiny new pressure tank with your new gun and hose setup from FinTech, and you find yourself thinking, now what? Or you're a seasoned painter and, just like pro ball players beginning spring training, a review of the fundamentals might help improve your process. Either way, let's review the basic steps and standard practices involved with using a pressure tank. Hi there, welcome back to the Spray Booth. I'm Michael here at Finishing Technologies. Pressure tanks are simple tools commonly found in your paint shop. If you need a new tank, you can see an overview of the options we offer here at Finishing Tech in another video. Check out the link in the description below. As we visit our customers' facilities, we sometimes find that this equipment is being used in ways that aren't as efficient as they could be. In this video, I'm going to present some concepts that are designed to help not only deliver paint to your gun reliably, but also reduce overall paint consumption, increase transfer efficiency, and achieve a better overall finish when you follow some important steps. So here I have a pretty basic pressure pot set up. A pressure tank consists of the tank itself, a clamped or sometimes screwed on lid with a draw tube attached, at least one air regulator and pressure gauge, and some way of carrying it around. Occasionally, a pressure tank has an agitator on board to keep the paint mixed as it's being dispensed. Before we begin, let's talk a bit about safety. These vessels come under a lot of pressure and can be dangerous if they're used improperly. Most tanks sold by FinTech, two gallon and up, are ASME rated, a safety standard for pressure vessels that assures their construction will withstand such pressures. Tanks have a pressure relief valve which pops off at 80 or 110 PSI depending on the model. Two quart pressure tanks are designed to pop off at less, so consult the manual for your tank for more information about that. Do not ever replace the pressure relief valve with anything other than the one specified for your specific model. When your tank is pressurized, before you do anything, including removing even one of the clamps, you must depressurize. Turn off or disconnect the air supply, then spin the pressure relief valve on the top of the pressure tank. If your tank does not have this valve, alternatively, you can grab the ring on the pressure relief valve to depressurize in a pinch. But most tanks are equipped with an easy to turn valve for this purpose. Remember, your tank can still be under pressure even if the airline is disconnected. It's wise to get into the habit of double checking that your tank is completely depressurized every time you begin, just to be safe and always before removing the lid. You should also replace the lid gasket on occasion, as this gasket can become cracked and leak over time, preventing the tank from pressurizing at all. Having that replacement on hand will make sure that you can swap it out quickly when you need to. Now let's talk about operation, which is largely the same no matter what model or size. Typically, we recommend that you have two regulators on your pressure tank. The first regulator is usually the one that pressurizes the tank itself. So in effect, this regulator controls your outbound fluid pressure. In most cases, the second regulator is used to control the atomizing air reaching your spray gun. Having two regulators keeps the controls close at hand, so if you need to make adjustments to the atomizing air, you can do that independently of the fluid pressure, and all without having to go back to your airdrop. If you only have one regulator, we do have kits that enable you to connect a proper second regulator as an upgrade. Link in the description below. Brand new and out of the box, these pressure tanks usually need some sort of assembly. Any factory attached fittings should be checked to be sure they're secure. Once you have everything tightened down, put on the lid and connect the airline. Slowly increase the pressure to the tank and check for air leaks. Tighten the loose bits as necessary, and once the air leaks are taken care of, you're ready to go. Attach the gun air hose to the output on your atomizing regulator and the fluid hose to the fluid output elbow at the top of the pressure tank. Then, connect the hoses to your spray gun, remembering that the smaller fitting goes on the air and the larger on the fluid. Once you have your spray gun attached to the tank with your air and fluid hoses, load the paint in the tank. Some tanks are sized so that you can put a one or even five gallon bucket directly inside without having to pour the paint into the tank. However, by pouring the paint, you can take advantage of the full fluid capacity of the tank. Consider adding a form-fitted liner for easier cleanup before you do. These liners are sold in packs and the one you need depends on the model of pressure tank. Contact us for help on that. Now that the paint is loaded, a quick solvent wipe over the lid gasket and tank rim is a good idea to be sure no paint gets into the gasket groove, which can cause leaks. Secure the lid to the tank with these clamps. Some two-quart models have screw-on lids instead. Now we get to the good part. On both of your regulators, the fluid pressure side and the air atomizing side, turn them completely off by twisting the regulator handles counterclockwise until they stop. You don't need to cinch down here, just where it stops. Then, connect your air supply. Quick disconnect fittings make this part easier, by the way. Now, slowly turn up that first regulator by twisting the handle clockwise. Leave the second regulator, the air atomizing one, off for now. No air should be flowing to the spray gun. 
This is actually another reason it's nice to have two regulators here. Otherwise, a ball valve should be in line to turn that air off at this stage. As a good starting point, set your tank's fluid pressure regulator at 10 PSI. At the spray gun, aim the gun's fluid end into a paint can or waste bucket and pull the trigger. The pressure tank will now begin fluid flow. Again, no air should be coming out of your spray gun yet. Hold down the trigger until a fluid stream emerges from the fluid nozzle on your spray gun. Depending on the hose diameter and length, this can take a little time. You can increase the pressure on the fluid controls to force fluid to move faster if you'd like, but prepare to back it off once paint emerges. When it does, you should have a consistent fluid stream. If that stream hits the wall on the other side of the room, you have a bit too much pressure here. Adjust the fluid pressure until you have a horizontal fluid stream that extends between 6 and 8 inches long before gravity bends the stream down. It could need a bit of an increase or decrease in pressure depending on the properties of your paint and the diameter and length of your fluid hose. It may be tempting to assume that more fluid pressure means you can paint faster. But in fact, it takes about the same amount of time to coat the same parts because the additional fluid pressure also requires more atomizing air pressure to break it up, creating an overspray cloud that doesn't really end up on your part. Instead, it's in the air and eventually in your booth filters. 10 to 20 PSI into the pressure tank is a common maximum for most coatings, perhaps a bit more if you have long hose lengths. Heavy body coatings, including those that need to be bottom fed, will require more pressure, sometimes a lot more. If you find that your average coating requires higher pressures, certainly if you're over 50 PSI or so, you may have some other issues. You might need to increase the orifice size on the fluid nozzle of your gun, or may need a larger fluid hose diameter, or you might even have a leak or a clogged fluid hose. Be mindful, especially if you're having to crank it beyond where it was set during prior use with the same coating. Once you have a horizontal fluid stream around six to eight inches before it bends downward, it's time to add atomizing air. Get a piece of cardboard or some waste parts and slowly, using the second pressure regulator, add atomizing air to the gun. Adjust the atomizing air pressure until you're happy with the finish quality, using the cardboard or a waste part to test your finish. HVLP guns should not exceed around 30 PSI of atomizing air in total, so watch your gauge here. Some air caps need more or less, but the max air inlet is usually printed on the air cap itself. If you find that you do need more than the recommended atomizing air pressure to get an acceptable finish quality, there are a few things to check. Are you using the correct air cap for your coating? Or does the air cap need to be cleaned? Does the air hose have sufficient diameter to deliver enough volume of air to the gun? Or are there kinks or disruptions in the airflow? Or maybe your fluid pressure is too high, hearkening back to the 6 to 8 inch rule. High viscosity coatings might have different general requirements, such as needing to have larger fluid hose diameters. Coatings or textures that are bottom feed out of the pressure tank have some special rules. Let us know if you need help with this. When you're done painting, depressurize the tank and remove the lid and any paint remaining inside. If you're using a tank liner, allow any remaining paint residue to cure. Then dispose of the old liner and replace it. Next, wipe down the draw tube, put some solvent into your tank, turn off the atomizing air, and repressurize to allow solvent to flow through your hose and spray gun, letting it flow until the stream is clear. Depressurize again, and you're ready for a change of color or to set up for the next workday. I'm so glad you could join me for this how-to video. If you have any questions about the operation of these pressure tanks, we are ready and happy to assist. Our contact information is on the screen. If you've got something out of this, we'd appreciate a like. And of course, we'd be honored to have you as a channel subscriber. Thank you for joining me here today, and we'll see you next time. Be mindful, especially if you're having to crank it beyond where it went. <laughs> crank it. <laughs> Sorry. What's wrong with crank it? Nothing. <laughs> Be mindful, especially if you're having to crank it beyond where it is set.